What's up, y'all? Welcome to the stream. Today I'm gonna to be working on some fun stuff. This is a like a secret guitar playing enemy <clears throat> that will inhabit one area of the overworld, which will be like a secret. But the uh, guitar player will actually be on all of the four adjacent screens, and he'll walk off and like hint at being at this secret location. So you got to find a way into this secret. Um, I won't reveal what that is on the stream, just in case, you know, I don't want to give away too many spoilers or whatever, but there's ways to get through some of the secret paths on the overworld. Uh, let me just, let's get the art back open for this guy. What was he? I guess I was working on some other stuff <clears throat> since I last... Okay, so it was in sprites, shadow, I think it was shy drop. Yeah. Calling this guy the shy drop. Oh yeah, here's him on the bench. Okay, so the first thing would be to get him back here in the world. I had him at this one location, but now I want him to be in the overworld secret location, which is a pattern which I don't think exists yet. So we need to make it overworld secret one pattern overworld secret one. All right, so we need to make that function. It's gonna be kind of like this bench pattern, actually. Which is like this. But probably more simple. Okay, so we've got the NPC tile. Basic pattern for this overworld secret area. And let's put the player. Oh yeah, I think it was yep. One one four zero was right next to it. And we need to be in nighttime. I think this is actually nighttime right here. Let's try this. Yeah, it's nighttime. Cool. So we come here. Oh, what's wrong with this? Overworld Seeker 1. Had the right pattern, just didn't have this. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe it did. But I just didn't have the MISC tile and the NPC tile correct. That's probably what it is. Create MISC tile. <clears throat> the bench. It's also going to be for the overworld world secret. And the NPC tile for this area. Where are we at here? Uh, here we go. Shy drop. Overworld secret now. So hopefully we should be able to see the little the, the shy dropped guy playing his guitar here. Nice. 
Nice. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's so cool to see this guy here. Okay. Um, he needs to play a certain song, so we need to hook that up. I don't think I've done that to the FMOD project so that he can have a guitar playing track while you're here. I don't have any audio for this yet. Yeah, I guess I'll just duplicate the waterfall for now. Yeah, whatever. Waterfall, wait, was there something else that might work better for this? For the guitar? Shit, maybe item room? Item room is kind of interesting. Doesn't really matter. Item room, wait, item room has... Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Waterfall is fine. I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play some guitar, basically record it and put it into a track. So it does, all I need is like one track of audio. Let's duplicate this. Oh, this guitar, put it on the overworld bank, save that, build it. So we'll hear the waterfall for now. Uh, we need to put this in Svet Ambience file name. If we have pattern overworld secret one. Play guitar. Okay. So we should hear the guitar event, which is waterfall. Just saved it there so it would stick with my current debug window settings here. Event guitar! Cool, we're playing guitar, I can hear a waterfall sound. Come back over here, it starts playing the world. So yeah, you're gonna have, this is gonna be a basically, it'll kill your music. If you find this secret. Well the whole point of this secret is that you're supposed to like just chill out with this dude by the, with this guitar. So yeah, he'll need to be playing his guitar as you enter here for this to make sense musically. But yeah, it'll basically stop your world music from playing and then once you go back to the overworld... I just thought of something actually, it's pretty damn important. Um, the secret path... Ooh, sorry, I'm running at 60. Oh no, what? It's 30. Oh, maybe because I was building? I don't know. Maybe. Alright, anyways. Oh, that's right. Okay. 
Yeah, so when it, they would place the secret path that's in area creation. Make secret path. There's something where it checks about nighttime. Is it here? No, uh, hmm. Where was that little bit? Might be get hour. Zilton, what's up, man? How you been, man? It's not get hour, huh? Is it get play time? No. You been good? What's new? How's school, man? All right, let's check out make secret path. Maybe that's not the, the right function. Here's create mountain tile. We're talking about bushes. Bush tile, make secret path. Here it is. Oh, right. You have a guaranteed pass? That's awesome. Good to hear, man. How did that happen? Okay, I think I might have already done this, so set a breakpoint here just to make sure. But I think you can actually walk out of this area even if it's daytime. What I'm concerned about here is you getting into this area, checking out this dude playing his guitar for a while, and then all of a sudden it's nighttime, you know. Going into neuroscience? Wow. Apply VR? Oh, wow, dude. <laughs> nice, right on, man. Cool, dude. Guaranteed pass, right on. Okay. It's nighttime, so this is always this is definitely gonna work. Let's do this in daytime. Just to make sure players don't ever get trapped here. And be like, ah, I have to wait all day for this guy to play guitar. Alright, man, cool. Nah, it's no worries. Hope you've been good, dude. Thanks for saying hi. Yeah, so I'm running it here with the daytime on, just to make sure this still... Oh, I think there's another predicate inside this make secret path function. So I'm wondering, like, this isn't enough. See, man. Right, if we have a secret, oh, see, make secret path. But inside secret path, this is not a secret path. Okay, so I think this is gonna work. It should. Doesn't care about night if you're already on this area. Right, it's daytime, I can see my shadow. Yes, and I can still walk out, but I can't walk back in, right? Right. Okay. That does clear that up.
no matter what if you start in this area or if you get it, even get into this area whenever this area gets created it can always walk its secret path that's good to know okay well that's a little bit of preliminary debugging I guess but it didn't it wasn't necessary all right so we've got the overworld secret pattern we've got him playing this guitar even though we don't have the guitar music yet um Okay, then oh, let's get this pattern looking a little bit better, but then make it so the drops, you can find him on all the four adjacent areas. So like he's uh, this area, no, not that area. I don't know, maybe this one. Yeah, this is it. So he's here, um, but that means he'll appear here, 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 and here, and walk like if he's, you know, if he's, He's here, he will walk that way, that way, that way, or that way. <clears throat> so this pattern doesn't need a lot of this. Let's see what it looks like with these some of these stairs though. I don't like the bushes rectangles. Those are kind of unnecessary here. Sal Dogs, what's up? Secret guitar. There's a secret guitar player. I'm adding a, uh, this, like, you'll see here in just a sec. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so good. These, um, I don't need the music debug anymore. Yeah, these stairs don't really work. I remember trying this earlier with the bench pattern. I couldn't really find much to get it to... Actually, maybe it does work. If I had the right tiles up here... Like, oh, these gargoyles need to go up one more. Let's play around with this a little bit, I guess. So, we'll go one more tile to, this, to the north here. And we need a center stairs, too to the north, which would be P to Y plus. Probably not below. Okay, let's see that. How you been, Salad? What's new, man? Huh, kind of like, oh, we need to pattern edge. Get pattern flags. We need to add a pattern there, or f some flags. Been all right? Cool, man. How are you liking Godot? Oh, you made a game for Ludum Dare? Ludum Dare? Wow, what's it called? What's the link? You're comfortable with Godot? Nice. The game's a disaster? Why is that? Oh, maybe this is working. It's kind of cool. I mean, there's these stairs here. But the stairs, why are they like... It was a good learning experience? Nice. So what, um, did you use Godot for it? This is P.Y. plus two to three. Oh, but it's... Oh, those are the bushes. How's that getting overwritten? 
these stairs up there. Oh, okay, so there's a lot of technical issues with like learning Godot. Oh, it's physics heavy. Yeah, oh yeah. Those kind of games require tons of tweaking. Get all the physics right. Get things bouncing just right and the gravity just right, you know? Like, it's funny because sometimes you can make things realistic, but it doesn't, it doesn't play right, you know? It doesn't play fun. All right, what if we went one more? Well, that's, oh, we wanted to set these to be definitely K style stairs so center. <clears throat> huh. These stairs aren't getting placed right here. Are they? Maybe they are. Oh, looks a little better, I guess. So it looks kind of weird. I think these are off a little bit, like, yeah. This bottom bit of that stairs shouldn't quite be right there, but, you know, what, what are you gonna do? You know what would be nice? If there was a bush that could cover up stuff around it a little bit. That's what we should be right here. Hmm. So what are your thoughts on Godot now that you've had a chance to get through some of the initial like technical issues and familiarity with the engine and all that? What do you what do you think about it now? Oh, the exported executable wasn't running right? Oh, huh. Sky fishing. Sweet dude, I love the art. Sweet. Oh, this is the ZX Spectrum palette? Do you mind if I play it a little bit right now, or...? Or do you prefer I try it later? Okay. Cool. I'll try it out. I totally understand. I totally understand. Yeah, I mean, what can you do in like a freaking weekend, you know? I appreciate these, these subtleties. Okay. I am sky fishing go. All right. So it's a, is it a mouse game? Ooh, okay, I've got wazzed. I can also aim with a mouse. Dude, this is pretty good. I like this art. I love the art, actually. I gotta say that 20,000 times. So I love the art. Okay, so if I click. Oh, sweet! <laughs> yes! I've got a, like a fishing line, and I'm fishing for asteroids? 
This is so great. I got one. Oh, and hit space to reel it in. Dude, I would not say this is a disaster. What are you talking about? I'm having fun. How do I, so how do I un, like if I want to start walking around again? Ah, <laughs> look at this one. I like this, I like this bug a lot. I don't know what's going on, but like my fishing lines. <laughs> yes, there it comes back. Ah, I like it, man. You're making me laugh and smile. This is great. Oh, you hit space to walk around again. Okay. I love this character. Oh, so you can eat the asteroids? Yeah, eat them. And that gives me score. So if I just like walk over one of these. Oh sweet, I can eat it. Give me that. Give me some asteroid. <laughs> I love it when this happens. Yeah, go, go, go. Nice, man. I love it. Good job, dude. Yeah, I bet that part's kind of hard to get right, like the rope physics, but it was actually fun having that bug, dude. That made it funny and fun. You're like, wow, what's going on? Nice, right on. It's going to be a bigger game. Cool. Yes, I'm excited to play it. Um, how is Godot with like full screen? Is there a way to get full screen with it? We got two gargoyles, some bushes. Oh, let's try a little bit of water beneath the bench. For some reason that was getting destroyed in the last bit. Oh, you implemented it now? Nice, man. Dude, good job. So, um, how many Ludum Dares have you done before? See, this is weird. It put a little water there. But right here, it didn't. Hmm. This area is curious to me. It's like it... Overwriting some of its tiles somehow. This is Y four three X. Oh, because it's both minus X. Oh my God. Nice. Ooh, sweet. Pixel perfect scaling is easy to do in Godot. That's great. It was your first LD ever. Nice man, that's like, I'm impressed. It's a huge motivator, right on. Yeah, I've never I've never really I guess I've done one tiny jam before. There's some water. Cool. I just wanted to see him playing guitar in front of some water. So let's move the water um, a little bit. So he looks like playing guitar right in front of the water. I want him to reflect for it to look kind of cool. Maybe we should put the center of all this up a pixel, or up a tile block. Oh, what happened to, okay, so he's got, Oh, he's got a tile right there. All right, so I want him, his tile to be plus one, and then the shy drop to be pause. Ooh, what happened to your pause here? Why doesn't it have a pause offset? Wait, oh, shy drop, shy drop the guitar. This one has a position. It needs to be negative one B. Oh, 
Oh, an adventure game? Cool. Wow, cool, you can get to other planets. Now I'm really, really liking it. Good, okay, so a little less water to the left and right, and then a little more to the below. Yeah, I love it. Ah, that's so cool. Oh, probably, let's put some fire around here too. Some light. Nice, you're pretty satisfied. That's good to hear. Oh yeah, it's like that almost with every open source engine. Ah, yeah. So what was one of the hurdles that you overcame with it? The technical issues that you had, like what was that one of those and how'd you solve it and stuff? Put a light maybe, let's try p.x plus two p to y plus three maybe we'll do a light pillar Oops, okay, I overwrote one of those tiles, but... Oh, maybe one of the gargoyles then could be a... Oh, maybe, oh, put it right to... One more pixel down, one more pixel to the right. Call them pixels today. Oh wait, so that was supposed to be three, and this is supposed to be two. Uh, so you're gonna have a single physics rope, but immediately freak out once you switch from moving left to right. Ooh, huh? Oh, it's three separate ropes. Ah, okay. Interesting. Okay, so you kind of worked around something as far as how their physics works. What about something non-physics? Was did you have any like issues with stuff other than physics, like windowing or? or video, or scaling, or sound. Ah, that works. Uh, it actually makes everything look a little better too with the how this is all set up. Yeah, I like that. Okay. What about oh there's a bush there. I guess that kinda hides the bottom of that corner. That's cool. It'd be nice maybe if this bush went to the left or yeah. Yeah. No problem. Oh, okay, that's good. Oh, okay. No sound. I see. Nice. Well, I'm glad you had no issues with the video.
And then um, Godot can do shaders, right? Those, oh, there's, there's a single bush right there and there. All right, we want it to be a rectangle from X minus four. to like minus eight. Oh, nice. Oh, it uses modified GLSL. Yeah, I think, I think you told me this before. Oh, right, it's just got some engine bindings. Hmm, engine bindings, that sounds interesting. Is it just, is it just, Basically, just like a few um, uniform variables and things like that, basically, that it can pass in? Or is it actual functions that it adds to GLSL? Hmm. Okay, we got some bushes there, good, good. Maybe that rectangle should be twice as... Yeah, that's fine if this gets bigger because we've got this little bit here where it... Um, bushes. We'll do two of these, this one's gonna be on X plus Oops, whoa, what happened? Oh, well, that was really weird. I don't know what happened there. Hmm, okay, passing data. Oh, uh, okay. So basically they're just they're just like it's like GLSL, but they're giving you some variables to start with. That's like exactly what Coco's 2DX does. Oh, that's nice. What it did is adding enough of those bushes there to the sides made those turn into sky because this is the um, this is this kind of pattern or this this kind of biome. It's dark biome. This is cool. I like this area, but I think I would like it to be one more pixel. Or him, yeah. Everything to move to the north. Well. Huh. Yeah, let's do one more to the north. And then the water or the the um the bushes down here. These should be one more pixel lower. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Coco Studio X does that too. They basically just inject your script with a couple different uniforms. Uh, they've got like a time un or like a not uniforms, but what do they call those? Are they uniforms? I don't know which ones I'm trying to refer to here. Oh, there. Yeah, we can just get this stairs tile. Oh, and the the shape circle needs to be a little taller. And the stairs on the left and right need to go one more south. What the heck? Oh, input handling. You can't access input either by pulling it or by receiving events. Oh, you, oh, either pulling or receiving. Oh, right. So wait a minute. Why? Why would you want to pull? Wouldn't, wouldn't it, in general, be better to use events?
follow the stairs center. Oh, anytime keep on repeating would cause an issue. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I understand about the poll. Hmm. Okay. Mm, oh, okay. I guess I just liked them back the way they were here. The light pillar kind of like overriding them there. Oh, half of it was physics. Wow. Well, yeah, that sounds like more of like the actual game part of it, the development, which is cool, man. It's exciting. Okay, good. All right, I'm gonna check this in. This is great. We got a nice little looking area for the drop. Oh wait, there's a secret here somewhere. Where is the secret? What is the secret? Isn't there supposed to be a secret? Oh, there we go, check it. Cool. So there is an item here on this screen. There's something that the player can get from getting to this area. But there's also the fact that there's this dude playing guitar. It's cool because it's a super secret area. Requires knowing what to do to get past this. <laughs> Another secret guitar player? Except he's tiny and he plays the ukulele? It's a great idea. Super great idea. Wow, I may I may actually do that. Right? Like there okay, so maybe you can burn one of those bushes, it goes inside a cave, and inside that cave there's a little ukulele playing guitar guy. It's so easy. I could just take the same art I had for this guy and just make it smaller. I like this. I like this a lot. Let's get this all checked in. We add, oh yeah, I added the metadata for that one event. <laughs> so add all, check the status, let's look at what's different. Right, so adding basically adding in this pattern for the overworld secret for this guitar player dude. All right, good, now it looks good. It's a nice pattern, really aesthetically pleasing. I like the reflection he has on the water. It's pretty nice. Let's commit that. Okay, this is the overworld. You know what, let's just call this the secret guitar player pattern. 
Okay, next thing is, I, I, this is the part I'm actually excited about, is him teasing you with where he's at. So all the adjacent areas, the directly adjacent areas, will have him there and walking off the screen towards, um, towards the, his secret area. Let's turn off music, verbosity. Oops. And I th thought I had the code already for this. Shy drop. Let's check this out. Shy. Isn't there a place where it adds this guy already? No. No. Oh, I forgot to add. I didn't ever add this? I thought I kind of mocked up this code earlier. Oh well. So we need to create the shy drop in a really similar ma manner to how the thief works. The thief hangs out near one area. So let's look for thief. Clear name thief. Oh, here we go. Add name thief. Right. Oh, it just adds it when it creates the world. That's so beautiful. This is the best place to put this. Good. Okay. So we've added the name thief to this pattern sphere. This is the overworld interest. Pattern waterfall. Oh, right, right. Okay. So we need to be, if it has flag secret, we're gonna add, oh wait, no, yeah, yeah, oh, overworld secret. Overworld secret pattern. If pattern equals K pattern overworld secret one, we're going to loop over everything around it, all the adjacent areas, add the shy drop. I guess there'll be one situation where it, there is no more shy drop. Oh yeah, and that will be once you get to, once you see the side drop for the first time, I'll write some code that basically searches through the overworld and removes himself. But actually, there's already a function that does that for Brutus, so I'll just use that. Cool, so we've got shy drop placed. See if that works. I don't know what he's gonna do. I don't even know what his AI does yet. I think his AI might already walk. Hmm. I don't know if we created him or not. Let's see if this works. First position, two, three, one, four. That's where I'm at. 
two five. All right, this is being added. Create names. Does it actually create? We got a Jider, Karsh, Shy Drops. Okay, it looks like it's actually creating him. Oh, is he walk in from off screen? Might be walk in from off screen. So I need to place him. Let's start with placing him in the middle. I think he, I think it, well, that's what the problem was there. Was that he was being placed off screen because the the area had that flag. So in create AI, let's just put him in the middle of the screen. And set any set valid pause. So hopefully it doesn't appear from off screen. I guess I should check that code before I do this. Oh, good. Right, right. This was one of those flags. Okay, great. Nice, there he is. Yes! What's up, dude? Oh, he's running the wrong way. He's not actually walking yet, but at least he's there. And he removed himself. Good, okay. So that's the kind of the general gist of this AI, is it starts on the screen. He... <laughs> Walks off the screen is really all he does. So he needs to walk, he's supposed to walk towards, towards this area, but sometimes you can't really get to this area. Unless I go on every single one of the screens around it and add a bridge. But that wouldn't work for every area. So, I guess in cases, yeah, in cases where he can't get there, he needs to pathfind towards, towards the exit point that is closest to his, his area. Just to give you the, so if he was on this screen right here, we should never die. He should only become invisible.
so that the next time you come back to this area, yeah, he'll set a target area, then set his direction towards that target. So he's just set a target area of overworld secret one, and it says direction towards the target. And I don't know if that's anywhere near going to be right. In fact, that should, that'll probably, well, actually, maybe I'll just make him walk. See if he walks to the right. Oh, invalid behavior, target. Overworld secret, what happened? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're here. We're, oh, this is the only way we need to look at these values. Area. Overworld secret one. Yeah, that seems like it parsed correctly. Apparently it didn't. Hmm. Wait a minute, am I talking about target or, or if? Oh, it's target area. Here it is, target area. Wait, I didn't write this yet. Oh, I used to just didn't write this yet. Just this code I wrote like three or four nights ago, just at the end of the night, real quick. I forgot all about it. <laughs> I don't remember any of this. Timers HP said target HP targets HP. This is behavior target. Okay, we need, we need to do a special subtype. If type is target, uh, and if subtype is behavior area, then we're setting a target area. So it needs to smartly realize where where this is. In fact, what it should do is just find the find that area, find the exit point that is closest to that. And then create an entity with that name. Well, it actually, just needs a position. It's an entity with a position that's part of the area, so it gets removed as soon as the area is done. But that way, the the enemy AI can target that specific point, that exit point. So it'll all work with the current entities and stuff. And it'll be really neat because AI, any regular AI, could just target. A certain area so I'm probably gonna have to do this for a couple different it there's this you know a few different enemies on the overworld that are like this they're special they hang out in a certain place so this is gonna be cool to have in there so let's find the area let's get the pattern parsed mm, that would be Words look up words patterns word would be Thurval zero one two I think let's hope that's right set a breakpoint make sure it is now we go world um, find pattern. For 
Do we have the area Z? What are we at here? Num values. No, this has nothing to do with the current. Okay, so we need world get pause that Z. We're looking for pattern, pattern. I guess that returns a V3I. Oh no. Oh, this needs to be pattern type. Oh. Pattern type. There, I guess that it does. Yeah, V3I. Okay, so. Call this pause. Now, if pause is not equal to a well, pause that is valid, um, we're gonna look for it. Oh, good. I mean, yeah, we got it. Let's just get it. Our ref A is area area pause. Oh, wait a minute. We we want to get the current area. Oh yeah. Okay. So we do need the current area because we're going to look for exit points and all that. So this, this is the current area. This can be a dot area pause z. So we look for pattern if it's valid. Oops. Otherwise, we just return true. Actually, no. We'll return false if it fails. Return true if it succeeds. That way, the script will bug out if you try and find a pattern and target a pattern that doesn't exist or something like that. It won't crash the player in red runtime, but it'll notify me if there's a problem, basically. All right, so pause is valid. We got find the exit point that is closest. So that means that it, there might be like up to two exit points on each uh, one of the four cardinal directions, which means that there may be corners where one cardinal direction is more preferable. So it doesn't really matter how much, which direction you're headed in. It's more about how close you are to that point. Okay, so that means we need to get the current point. Right, so take the, what's the direction? Get the, direct, get the compass direction. Can you create a compass direction from a V3i? I can't remember. Oh yeah, you create a V3R from a compass direction. But isn't there a V3I No, no, I want to get the compass direction from not ah, this one. Yes, there. Get compass direction from source to destination. That's it. I think I had this function. Yeah, if des is less than source, west, blah, blah, blah. Very good. That's what I wanted. This doesn't do north, east, south, south, and west, though.
from this area to the destination area. Okay, so we've got a general compass direction. Okay, now that needs to become Okay, so we need a position E3FP. This is going to be the area's width times a half. Okay, so V3 to FP. P is going to be the A dot area size times a half. And then Add the compass direction. Okay, so p dot x plus equals x times p dot x. Same thing for p dot y. What the heck is wrong with this? No viable conversion from v3i to compass there. God damn it. Oh, let's get compass dir. All right, there you go, it's triggering this. Cool. Let's get this code finished. Add the compass direction. All right, so that's our destination ideal point, right? So if, if the direction is west, the ideal point's like zero, 200, you know, gives you an actual point on, the, it's on the edges of the screen where you're looking for it. And then we look through all the exit points Auto ref exit point in area dot exit points 
and we look for the closest exit point until we find it. Um, so we need the closest. Basically, just need a position eventually, and the closest. This is look for closest exit point. We're gonna find a what are exit points again? Yeah, V three I center. Oh, that's a that's a um. To tile pause. Okay, so back to closest. And float closest dist. Squared equals squared nine on nine, so it's a big. All right, now we need the current point. We got already got. Oh, this is. This should be more like. Find ideal exit direction. Not uh, exit. Ideal exit point. Look for closest actual exit point. Okay, so we need a veg to Q. Q equals a dot get tile pause for ep dot center dot x ep dot center dot y and the float distance squared equals q dot distance squared. 2p I guess this could be a vec2 as well no nah, that's fine so closest distance squared distance squared if distance squared is less than the closest distance squared then man this should be a pattern somewhere I should never have to write this kind of algorithm again um, right I do this all the time I'm always looking for the closest thing this needs to be like a really fundamental reusable pattern Maybe a maybe a pound to find actually. Distance square less than closest dist. Then closest dist equals distance squared. And the closest equals Q. Now we create a target entity. Oh, we need to reuse target entities as well. All oh, right, that's pretty easy actually to reuse. I'll name it. Basically, we're looking for a certain pattern, so um, I'll create like an entity name, like target area with pattern name, and then whenever we're, um, whenever it runs this again, this like searching for an exit point, it will um, 
you know, look up that, see if there's already an entity named that before trying to create it once again. So basically we just need a name. This name is just um, kit format. What's up, high side? Yo, how's it going? Thanks for auto for hosting, man. The format is just um, target area percent s, which is the pattern name, which was Sturval two. Songbringer is going really well. I can't even, ah oh man, it's just, everything is going so well. It's been a lot of stress lately though, with um, getting this, this you know, getting it all finished. When it's like, it's been like this several times in my life where I've created a video game and um, you spend so many years making it that you really want it to be the best it can be. You really want it to like, um, for people to receive it as well as possible so that it, you know, it just, it just does as well as it possibly can. Right. And so I, I, it's, it's like a strange thing because I want to do everything I can to help song ringer do well, but also there's an art to it of not doing things. Sometimes there's things you can not do, which are, which are just as effective at making, you know, your, your baby fly out the fly out of the nest for to say, I don't know. It's just one of those things where it makes me nervous because I'm like, damn it, I don't want to mess things up now, you know, with something. But the game's already pretty solid. I've been playing it lately. It's been really fun. All my playthroughs, I've been just like the most satisfying playthroughs of Songbringer yet. There's so much new stuff. Like the new, there's a new hidden boss. The hidden boss is so rad. And because the, the hidden boss is really, really powerful too. So you've got to like, You've got to be just powerful enough to, to beat the hidden boss. But it's just so cool knowing that if you've got enough like items and, and weaponry and stuff like that, you can go take on this really difficult hidden boss and win a really powerful item too. Yeah, exactly. It's so easy to worry about things. But, you know, it's not, it's not the bigger picture. I guess the bigger picture is trying to enjoy the process, right, of making it. Cause I love doing what I do. Oh, that's supposed to be stir valve. Not C stir. Okay, so if this entity already exists, find this name component. If id. is zero, then we're going to create it. But otherwise, once we have it, we want to be if id is not equal to zero, then we set the um, AI's target to this entity. Point the AI toward the target. Set the AI's target, whatever. My host notification is stuck on? What? What do you mean? Is it something visual with this, the stream? Is it a thing with my settings? Oh, it's something wrong with... Um, that one service or whatever that does these. What is that? Well, it's... Hold on a second. This one, Twitch alerts. Here, I'll just turn that off. Hopefully I remember not to save this file. Oh, it's still on? God damn it, this is the thing about this. Is there something you gotta do to like ref, oh, is that it? 
Is that, the, is that all I had to do? Oh my god, I never knew I had to press this button to make that happen. Oh, this whole app makes more sense now. Good god. That's kind of a... I think it was Twitch alerts. Okay. Gosh, now something now when something's broke with the stream, I can feel like I actually can change it live. I always thought, oh, I gotta restart the app for these settings to apply. Oh, they renamed. Oh, they're stream labs now. Okay. Oh man. I wonder if they I probably should log into that again. <laughs> See what's see what's new. Okay, so we're gonna create this target entity. Did equals entity create new name component name new position component with the pause and that should be all it needs. Oh, and this also needs to be pushed back to the area's entities. Hopefully that can be done from here. Can't remember if I made that private or not to area. Hopefully I didn't. Nice, I think this is gonna allow this. I'll allow it. Yeah, all right, let's see if this works then. So basically what's happening here is the AI on the screen is targeting a certain area in the overworld and then creating a single little entity to represent that point in the world that lives for a while until until this AI can get to that point or whatever it can you know, delete this point if it needs to all right let's see what happens we've we, trying to look for pattern what pattern are we looking for pattern none Okay, that didn't work. Oh, probably because it's third valve one. Huh. It's third valve one. Okay. So this needs to be third valve one. Also, this needs to be third valve one. Let's try that again. This is really neat. I've never had to create an entity to represent a point that an AI is going towards because I've always used other AI as targets. Those always had position components. So this is kind of neat to represent an abstract point in the world as an entity for an AI. It's kind of interesting. Okay, we got X, Y. Pause pattern. What's pattern? Should be overworld seeker one. Good. Stir valve one. X, Y. The direction. So we're looking for, okay, we're looking for pause, two, four, zero, correct. And we should be at three, four, zero, is that right? What area, where, uh, that's A. <clears throat> one, four, zero, good. Oh, one, four, zero, we're to the left of it, to the, to the west. Okay, well then, so the compass direction should be east to head towards it. Yes, and it did get that. And adding that to x, let's make sure this adds correctly. Yeah, x should be negative if it's going west. Good. So that should be x equals one, y equals zero. Good, now we've got p is half the size of the area. 
and then plus wherever it's headed. So after this, we should have the right edge of the screen in the middle. 420, 120, yes, exactly. We have a good ideal destination point now. The next thing we're gonna do is look through all the exit points, getting those tile positions of them. This exit point, whoa, where were they again on the screen? Right, okay, so we had an exit point up here in the top, top right, top left, center left, center right. Hopefully the center right point actually is an exit point. Actually the center right point, this might not be an exit point. Mm, okay, I need to process exits a little bit differently actually. So not only using the regular exit points, there's four or three natural exit points here, but there's one secret exit point. And I want this guy to walk that secret exit point to hint at where he's at. So I'll need to rework this a little bit, but let's see if the algorithm worked in general. So what's this Q point? We got this first one was 13228 which is, yeah, okay, that's right. That's the left path. We get set to closest first. This Q, 330, 228 this is the right path. Okay, I'm confident this is working. Okay, let's see if this part works about the creating an entity to represent the point. So the name becomes target area underscore overworld secret one. Good. And we're looking for the name component. If we don't find it, we're not going to find it the first time. Then we create a new one with that name and that position. Push it back as part of the area so it gets removed when it's done. And then set the AI's target. I'm glad this all worked. I think this point so you call it set the AI target. Okay. Well, we need one more thing to get him to function perfectly right, but let's, let's focus on the other part first where you can I was just thinking in my head how he's going to work. Like his AI, I think, is going to part, maybe walk like halfway off screen and then set his movement flag so that he can walk on top of things so he can get past this secret bit. But I think it's probably a little smarter just to go start with the other areas around here. This is the harder one, the last one where he's actually got to walk towards the secret path. So let's make him, let's work on the other areas. So let's go to the east first, the east of this area and just get him to actually pathfind. So if I run this bit right now, 
Let's turn off any breakpoints that we might trigger. And um, we should get the AI so he should be able to target the right location for the exit point path. Oh, did I do closest? This is supposed to be closest. I just thought of that right there. All right, we found the closest point, and then now we need to set it. Okay, here he is. Let's see if he walks to the south. What? Yeah, he walks down that way. He's really dumb. What did he get stuck for? Shy drop. Do you have move flags path find? Oh, that's the biggest problem there. Just path find. Still got stuck. Why oh, are you stuck, man? I wonder if you get a stuck like AI. Initial, initial B. No, he doesn't do any kind of stuck AI. It's weird, I don't know why he's getting stuck with the move. Oh, it's flags. Oh, that's better. I'm like, what? That doesn't make sense. There we go. And now he's got quasi pathfinding. He shouldn't have invalid pause though. Move mass default is not appropriate for him. What is move mass default again? Okay, static, yes, we want static. Water, sky, foe does not matter, exit does not matter. Neutral, no, container, I guess, switch, I guess. There, now he should be able to get off the screen and walk over stairs. Damn it. Is it because he has the foe category? Oh, there we go. Weird. Oh, that time you started in the middle? This one, he's, oh, he's going the right way. Oh, this must be an exit point then. Oh, that's great. 
here, he's only got one choice. They either go left or go right, either one's good. So he, didn't, he went the right way in all those cases, and he didn't even need to do any pathfinding to make it all happen. Well, it probably would be better if he did. Let's actually do that. Let's make him pathfind. But actually, this is a pretty good to check in, because I'm, I'm happy that it actually worked there. Oh, one thing to check is if it can actually duplicate, create, um multiple of the same entity so let's make his AI do something stupid like constantly look for new area so he'll tr just constantly be trying to create target points target point target point we'll just make sure that's not gonna cause a billion entities to be get created. Okay, so we're this is our first time. We're gonna go ahead and create that. Second time. Same name, right? Yep. Id. I already had it. Beautiful. 847. And then it's from then on. Oh damn, so we gotta do this first, really. before we do all this stuff. Wow, yeah, this is way on the outside of this whole loop, basically. Hmm. Why am I working in Xcode? If e equals zero, we're going to create the entity, and this is where we got to do all this stuff. All right, there. That's a little bit easier. One more thing, though. It's actually kind of important. Let's actually put in the current area's position. So we don't want our, this area's target points to ever match another area's target points. That would happen during a transition only, but still, it's just better to have the area pause. Oh, I guess we need a for all this. Yeah, a dot area pause on desk. Okay, now I gotta just do a couple more debugs, make sure that all works. Now it's a little more efficient about how it only has to look up the whole position and see which one's closest and all that stuff if it indeed needs to look for that. Okay, this time the target area is going to be a little bit different, but more robust. We've got the area position mixed into this name now. Shouldn't find it. Okay, we've got closest point. 
of 90, 0. Right, that's on the bottom. Good. And then we create the entity and then return it as AI. Okay, so let's run that again. Next time he calls this, we should be looking for the same name. We should already have it. Don't need to do any of that work anymore. Good. Okay, so that's that is now AI going crazy proof. And let's run it one last time just to make sure that this is kind of still working as I, as it was. And then we'll move into the next phase where we're making start making this cooler. Maybe improve the art for it. Uh, do I need this debug data? I might. So I don't know why it starts in the middle there, but at least he goes the right way. And here he just magically appears. <laughs> here I'm really proud of him for going the right way. Okay, good. We're at a good point to check in. Check it in! It's kind of a big function, actually. A chunk of code. Great. Okay, I want him to pathfind. So path target. Um, I want to check how Vel does, or or maybe Keel. Pathfind. She just calls path target. I think that requires like AI movement vector. No, there's no vector movement. Okay, path target, dir path. So we'll do a total timer of like 10 seconds and then he'll become invisible. So if we have path none, mode zero,
here that we will do sequence follow path if path any if timer is greater than zero and here we should set path to none target to none go dormant I think it should work all right so we've got to basically check in oh, I guess it should be if mode zero both these So we got the sequence path where he sets his path and then later he goes and follows his path, the next tick even, says dirt path, delays a little bit before he goes again, sets another direction towards his path. There. So let's see him pathfind. We got the debug data on so we'll see where he, how he does it. Okay, we gotta guess that works. <laughs> oh my god, he's just like constantly pathfinding. Oh, we gotta do if... He only sets the direction towards his path if his target is far enough away. So once he's got like a clear line of sight, he's close to his target, he just sets direction towards his path. So we'll add another sequence called path done. If mode is zero, if timer is greater than zero, if path any, if target near 40, maybe even 60 or so or 80, something like that. How many blocks is that? Three would be 60. 60, I guess, would be enough. Maybe not, though. I'm thinking what, what this is going to do is like go mask, go mask move, flags. No, oh, not move flags. Mask move. Um, we want to remove static, I guess. St remove static. I guess this has to go before this other pattern. Well, zero of target path, target near. We don't want to do this every single time. We want to allow it to go through to the next one if. If we have a move mask. Oh no, we can just go mode one and then we can follow the path in mode one or mode zero. Okay, <clears throat> so this should make him so he turns off his static movement flag when he gets close 
And hopefully that makes it so he can walk the seeker path. It's kind of weird how he does that pathfinding. Damn, what happened? Oh, he, I guess he turned off his move fly. Okay, it was from him turning off his move flag too soon. So I guess it sh this should be more based on time. If timer is less than five, path any, it doesn't matter what how close the target is. You can walk across secrets after a while, after five seconds. Okay, Let's see how he does with the other areas. Well, cool. At least now he kind of pathfinds. So I'll get that checked in. Oh, this is supposed to be unmasked move static. So unmask them all. Unmask, move, static, all that. Why hasn't he got his... Oh, he's still this path, 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 path. I guess if he gets stuck, he should at least stop. <laughs> Not... <sighs> yeah, he should just at least stop.
He's in either one of these modes. If he has a path. Actually, if he has anything, doesn't matter about his path, but if he does have a dir. So if dir any. If stuck 0 0.5, maybe 1.0. No, 0 0.9. Um, stop. Okay, so there you can at least stop and not look like an idiot. Hopefully. And he should stay there too. He shouldn't be he shouldn't go away. Yeah, good. He doesn't just like immediately disappear or something. See what happens with the other AI if that didn't mess up. Cool, you can still walk off the screen. Does that weird walk back on the screen thing though? What's up, Space My Name? How you been? Oh, it's because he starts behind that. Oh, uh, good. Okay, so he's still got his pathfinding working. And at least he can stop. But I did want to see... Just wanted to confirm that his AI is actually stopping there. Hold on, why doesn't it show his AI? AI system, that should show no matter what. I'm going to loosen this requirement here. I do not need to have foe or friend to show AI. If you have an AI that's running, you should be able to show it. Oh, that in the next mode, it would have showed it. Oh, oops. OK, never mind. No, wait, it wouldn't have. If verbosity is three and e AI dot behavior is valid. Or verbosity is two and it's an enemy or a friend and it's valid. So got verbosity two. Okay, he's got initial, follow path, path stop. Okay, yeah, he's like, oh, I pretty much gave up because I got really stuck there. Maybe he should face the player at that point. 
Like, hey, what are you doing? Stop, turn on path none. Target, hero, face, hero, target, none. Mode nine. And this time, we should be able to see his AI, even with the static category, if we're in verbosity three. This guy's gonna be pretty interesting to have on the overworld. Just this random guitar player. Secret location. Oh, what happened? Face. What happened when I got that face statement? Oh, face target. Okay, cool. Now it's pretty clear that is that the AI, the AI kind of gave up too. And it's really a nice hint, you know. But we'll get him to walk this secret path. In fact, if it was walkable, oh my gosh, this is kind of better that he doesn't walk the path of the secret. Let's take this out, actually. Yeah. If it was nighttime. You can totally get through there. I think he's walking a little fast. But there. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm a lot happier with this AI that way. And this is a good place to check in. Oh, I did one more thing to confirm, I guess, was um the whole verbosity thing. Let's make sure that I didn't mess that up. So we've got AI showing their stuff. And then that. Oh, dang, that's how much AI has that. Let's, let's swap those around, maybe. Ah, actually, I guess that is the right way to do it. Okay, I can see as AI, if need be. Let's check this in, and that's gonna be it for today's stream. Good, so all I really checked all I really did there was make his AI so he can pathfind, and then he does something smart if he can't path if he can't walk his path. He gets too stuck. Okay, so the shy drop pathfinds. Great, so all of the code is in place for this guy to behave as he should. He's this character that appears near a secret area and really teases you. Like, like what is that? How does he get there? What is, how does he get to this area? You know, and it's a secret path. There's like, there's only a certain way to get to walk, to get to this area. It's pretty neat. And then also this area has a secret item there too. So if you, if you're, if you're patient enough or you find it, you know, this secret area, you can, you can also find the item. Should be pretty exciting though to find him. Like when you're when you're playing around, you're exploring a world, and you get some new world seed or something like that, or you started playing recently. It'd be so neat to be like going back and find like, oh, what's this guy? Who is this guy? Why is he? What is he doing there? Be really, it should be pretty interesting as a player. And then I'll probably put in like one or two more of these kinds of things to the overworld because they're really neat. They really add a lot of just flavor to the overworld so pretty excited about it all right guys well thanks a lot for watching and um we'll see y'all next time hope y'all have a great night